Wrestling fans around the corner all around the world. I'm Dan Moratti along with Mr. USA Hall of the 2006 Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas and the chicken wing. We want to make sure you're well fed, Tony. <laughs> you already do. But as usual, for the great fans that give us a little love, a little TLC, a little support, Tony, we need to send out not just a small, but a very big thank you. Thank you so very much. You know, y'all very special to me. I normally never get interrupted when I'm eating my dinner, but y'all are so special, interrupt. All right, Tony, we want to send out a big time special thank you to- All right, Tony, I don't know if this one is near you down in Midlothian, Virginia. Uh, some call her Smokey, sometimes I mess up and call her Stoney. Yep. Tina Rathaj, she got the Macho Man Randy Savage t-shirt All right, t -shirt but, but she couldn't get a butter t-shirt. Macho Man was probably one of the, the most excited wrestler to come along in the WWE in many, many uh, years. But even though you are a Virginia man, you don't know where Midlothian is. No. All right, but I'm I... from, what, it depends on what area. See, I'm from, the, I was born in the Allegheny Mountains. Yeah. And you got the Allegheny Mountains. Yeah. You got the Shenandoah Valley. Yeah. You got the Tidewater area. So Virginia is a very interesting state because it got mountain valleys and beaches. All right. It's one of the very few states that everything is in. All right. Well, we also want to send out thanks to Trent Stewart in Anniston, Alabama. Tony, I'm sure you'll be talking to him, a huge fan of yours. We've got Stephen Bolin, Claremont, California. He loved the big Kamala that you drew. Jason Manos, Keene, New Hampshire. He got the Vader 11 by 14. I've been to Keene, New Hampshire. Well, Blake Fabian, Las Cruces, New Mexico, a place I'd love to visit. La, got the La Nikki, Cruces, I've been there too. You've been to Los Cruces? Yep, I, yeah, yep, when, uh, yep, I used to wrestle out of Albuquerque way back in the day with uh, Rick Romero. Well, he got was the, a big star during that time. He got the Nikki Cross 11 by 14. Our friend Dennis Stanko Jr., Youngstown, Ohio, he got a Nikki Cross. 11 by 14 autograph photo bundle. We want to send out thanks to Scott Shanafelt, Salem, Illinois. He got the AJ Style t-shirt bundle. And Eddie O'Hader in Salinas, California. Salinas, he, yes. He got the Undisputed Error 11 by 14 photo signed by all four members. Thanks to our friends from NXT for sending that along, Tony. So as we like to tell the fans at home, every time they make a purchase, whether it be big, whether it be small, it helps keep the lights on so we can do these shows. Yes, it is. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, there. Well, and also the good thing about Boston wrestling is, you know, due because of, of the, this virus or the coronavirus stuff, a lot of people is not able to get out and talk to wrestlers and meet and meet us like they did in the past. But luckily for Boston wrestling, you can always tune in here. You can hear stories and things. You know, we just uh, uh, lost a good friend, Animal, and and you know so. You get some first-hand report about what type of person animal war warrior were. And, and so it's good to kind of keep you in light of things, even though it's like football. You can't go to the arenas anymore, but at least you can enjoy the game on television. And you can enjoy wrestling right here with Boston Wrestling uh, uh, on a regular basis. You might not get the in-ring action like you're accustomed to, but at least we bring you the history, the memories, the legends, exactly. and some laughs. Exactly. But we need to implore you, fans, as 2020 comes to a close, we're not immune from the hard times that have hit the rest of the world. So for every fan watching, whether you are a millionaire, whether you are close to homeless in the street, we need to ask you to help us out. Simply share, share, share. Whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on Twitter, no matter what social media platforms you use, share the links to these videos. The more fans that we have watching, the more legends we're going to be able to help keep working like Tony, That's like right. Marty Jannetty, like Brutus Beefcake, and a lot of the others that we're working on having coming in here. Also, if you're in wrestling Facebook groups, if you're on Reddit or any of the other popular wrestling le websites, share, share, share. I don't know what, what's going to happen with that guy by the time this video is. He's going to win. 2020. Share the links to these videos, fans so we can keep the lights on and the legends working. Again, and if you vote. tune in, and well, this is gonna probably wind up airing after the vote, Tony, but there's always 2021, I guess. <laughs> also, fans, as you know, if you watch the premieres, if you join us during the fun, during the, the chats that we have, and sometimes they get wild, especially when uh, all the men that are chasing Maria Davis around, that the chat, that's and a I different story. For a different time. And I'm going to give the people a good laugh, and you're going to love this, because this is complimenting you. 
Yeah. You know, Tony Atlas didn't go too far in school. So one day, Damarella came up to my house up in Maine, and I showed him this picture. And he said, Tony, that's a great picture. The only problem is you misspell it. So, well, Dad, I fixed it. You fixed it? I fixed it. Well, I'm going to have to double check I this. fixed it, see? I fixed it. I misspelled Simba. I'm now, many <laughs> time I wrote, the many <laughs> time I wrote Saba Simba, and Dad came and took one look at it. So it's a great picture, Tony. The only problem is you misspelled Simba, but you spell it right <laughs> down here. But you, you remember that day? I do remember that so day. I, so I'm giving compliment. So if anybody buy a print of, of this from Dan Morello, the Saba Simba print, or anything, all you remember that the spelling, Dan Morello, Tony Atlas is responsible for the drawing, Dan Morella is responsible for that spelling. <laughs> I feel like an elementary school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but fans, if, you, if you're watching the live chats, again, the super chat helps out. That gray button with the S, the dollar sign symbol underneath. Anything you can do to help that way helps. The holiday season is coming. We've yes, got eBay. Is. we got merchandise galore, as you can see yes. everywhere. Not only that, but baby. Yes. I don't even want this to go. But look at this. You want to talk about a great collectible for your man cave. You talk about one of a kind. Tony Atlas made this beautiful drawing of Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, 18 by 24 inches. Tony, this is exquisite. Thank you. I thought the Kamala one you did was great. That's long gone, unfortunately. Now we have this beautiful drawing available. It's one of only one. Tony, I don't even want to know how many hours it took for you to draw this. And but I want to thank all you fans. Here, show, show that again, Ann. All um, right. I, I want to thank all you fans uh, out there because here lately, the only way that I've been able to make a, 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 a living is by doing, by, by doing artwork for all you wonderful fans out there. And so Dan Morella ha, ha, have been having me to draw stuff for him, for the fans. So y'all want anything drawn, if you want me to draw you with a, a Huck Hogan, with President Trump, with anybody, just contact Boston Wrestling, and I'll be more than glad to do it. And the good news is, if you don't have the money for an original, uh, along with the Kamala on this holiday season, we're also going to have a much smaller 11 by 17 print. This one would be a little bit easier maybe to fit on the wall. Yes. This one will have more than one of. So I also want to employ you, along with the eBay, another great way you can help keep the lights on and keep these shows rolling is Patreon. You're talking about not dozens, over a hundred videos at this point. You get early ad-free access to every episode of Wrestling Inside as we produce. We have an exclusive Marty Jannetty episode you can't even get on YouTube. We have our exclusive Studio Shooter Interview DVD collection, acclaimed around the world that's aired even on the Howard Stern Show. And again, more than anything, you help keep Legends working for the price of a cup of coffee over at Starbucks. Oh, at a chicken wing. At patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Again, along with the great merchandise we have on eBay, you can get the link to our eBay store in the description box below. We have the WWE t-shirt fundraiser going on. Thanks to our great friends in Stamford, Connecticut, for the regular price of a t-shirt on WWE Shop. We give you not just the shirt, but we also give you a mystery autograph photo a WWE Cup, and again, like you just heard earlier with our friend uh, Tina and our other friends earlier in this video, we're going to give you an on-air shout-out. We're going to give you a thank, uh, thank you on the show for helping us create the show. That's right. So there's a lot of ways you can help. That's right. And another thing, every time I meet one of y'all, I'm going to grab you give you a great big old kiss. Well, that definitely won't help if that's the that's case. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, again, thank you for tuning in. Again, please share, share, share. That's the most important thing. If you can get involved with the Patreon and the merchandise, that's a huge help, too. Our goal is to keep wrestling legends working. And, Tony, I've told you, we're working on a big announcement. We, we're stuck as far as live events go, but we really want to up the ante for the ninth annual Paul Bear or Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. We have some very special things we're working on we're going to tell you about soon. Right now, fans, we've talked enough. Stand by a brand new episode of Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA. Tony Atlas is next. 
Wrestling fans, the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive explodes into Christmas with 12 featured superstar guests. We can't bring you a live wrestling event due to COVID restrictions, but we'll be bringing you a series of cyber autograph signings and meet and greets. This Sunday night during WWE's Farewell to the Undertaker at Survivor Series, join former WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion Marty Jannetty for a live cyber autograph signing and watch along. You never know what to expect with Marty Live. Get a personalized autograph from Marty Jannetty signed live on the air and mailed to your home. Join us now through mid-December as the superstars help us continue our mission to update Santa Claus's GPS to find every kid's house this Christmas, put smiles on faces while honoring Paul Bearer's memory. VIP packages are still available. Don't worry if you've missed the live superstar signing Every star is signing enough photos and posters while they're in Boston to fill VIP packages through December the 19th. Whether for your wrestling collection or to give us a holiday gift, if you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, please help our ninth annual Hall Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. Visit bostonwrestling.com and our social media platforms for complete event and toy drive information. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Insiders. It seems like we're distracting Tony. But no, a, I'm right here. Over there, People know I'm always looking for something. I'm not all there. I've been hitting the head with cheers. What are you doing? I've over been head butt getting head butted and everything. This is Tony at the WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, and I'm looking for something to give Dan Miranda for you great fans out there. You you have a gift to give to the fans, or you have something for me? Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you, oh, and right. you're gonna. You're going to let the great fan... Oh, I'm going to be like Mr. Alter, McFeely on the... Uh, Alter, Alter Ford. You know I got what? two great friends that helped me with this. And they say, give that to Dan and, and make sure that, that Dan be able to sell it. Oh. But you keep talking, Dan, while I keep All looking. All right, I'll keep talking. Well, Tony, you and I almost began this conversation off the air, but I said, you know what? This is going to be more interesting to have on the air. We had an episode already produced. Uh, for tonight, we're going to run that next Tuesday, as that's part of the course here. We are Tuesday nights with Wrestling Insiders at your house. Tony, uh, there is big news coming from the world of professional wrestling right now. About Vince? N WWE, well, let's try and break it down piece by piece. WWE um, had run into some problems with Andrew Yang, the Democratic presidential candidate, as you continue to, to shuffle through that bag over there. Are you familiar with with Andrew and his I I like drive. his I like his idea. I like his idea for the future of the kids. His, his ideas on on educating our our our, uh, our kids, but it kind of stops there. But I'm talking about his issues that he has with WWE. About about the money. Well, about the classification of employee versus independent contractor for one. Well, are you familiar with this? Yes, yes. You, 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 uh, me and you had this conversation we before. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We discussed it. My opinion is, I think they got it pretty damn good. You think they have it damn good? Yeah, that's just my opinion. Because well, I was, I was there, and I'm gonna ask all you fans out there. How do you like to work one day a week and make a hundred grand a year? All right. Well, Paige, as you know from WWE, she took to Twitter. And she recently said that she uh, was learning a lot about unionization, which led to Zelina Vega, the former uh, valet of Andrade and Angel Gazer in WWE, uh, responding very positively on Twitter. And then Andrew about Yang, the union. And then Andrew Yang said in an interview, he said, WWE is just plain fucking greedy. Do you uh, think that? Would you agree with those sentiments, Tony? My nope. uh, dear friends, you don't think WWE is greedy. Nope, I don't. That he may think so. You know, everybody, see, that's what make America so great. Everybody has to their own individual uh, opinion. But when I look at the success that WWE has made for, made for me, I'm still making a living off of what WWE did for me. There's a lot of wrestlers is making a living off of what WWE did for me. So 
The, the, the w, w, see, we got a lot of spare time on our hands. Yeah. We're looking to get all our eggs out of one basket. Mm -hmm. You know, you take Huck Hogan for it. Where the rock? Yeah. He, most, people are more familiar with the rock now than Hogan. WWE, without WWE, there'd be no rock. They put the rock in the, in the position where whereas the rock could be what he is now. They put Tony Atlas in a position. See, when somebody get you started in something, what you do with it after that, look at Kane. Kane is now uh, uh, the, the mayor, the mayor of, 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 of Chattanooga. Jesse the Body Van Tour. There have been a lot of wrestlers that, see, most people look at the WWE as being their last stop. People like Hogan, Kane, they look at the WWE as a stepping stone into something bigger and greater. But that's up to that individual. They could use what they get off of WWE to advance themselves in other things. There have been other wrestlers that started a gym because they were well known in the WWE uh, 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 business. So WWE is just part of a person like not the total life. And what most people want to do, well, even a lot of football players make millions and millions of dollars and die broke. True. A lot of boxers make a lot more money than wrestler and die broke. All right, well, let's get into kind of yeah. the chunk of the news here, Tony. Uh, on Friday, November the 13th, which is why we're kind of pushing this episode up sooner than anticipated, a WWE announced that Zelina Vega was released from her contract, and Zelina put on Twitter, I support unionization, which led to Andrew Yang saying, I haven't forgot about Vince McMahon. So, Tony, do you think that it is wise for WWE to perhaps make an enemy out of Andrew Yang now that Joe Biden looks like he is going to become the next president of the United States? I don't think the WWE made an enemy out of Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang picked the fight. He jumped in on this. Vince didn't attack him. Vince didn't come after him. Vince probably supported him. Probably people that work in his office with WWE that have supported him. Andrew Yang is just jumping in on this, but I, I don't hold it against him. Everybody, like, this is America, like I say. Everybody in the it, it, to fight the battle they feel that they need to fight. Uh, I myself have absolutely no animosity towards the WWE because, like I say, <clears throat> If I was not a WWE, former WWE superstar, would I be here now? Will y'all be bearing my pictures now? If you don't work for the WWE, you don't mean nothing. You take guys work for TNA for years, years. Never, we, the status of where the WWE could put you. You take guys work, work for WCW, as big as they were, NWA. Look at Harley Race. Harley Race was one of the... In the NWA, one of the biggest names that the world ever knew. Dusty Rhodes was one of the biggest names the world ever knew. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about Dusty Rhodes or, or even Ric Flair, for that matter, until they stepped foot in the WWE ring. Now, what a person could do, and I'm guilty of it too, when I was making that good money, I could have started Tony Atlas Fitness Center. There was nothing to stop me. I had the money. I had the time. A lot of the wrestlers waste a lot of time. They waste time in the bars. They waste time doing at home. We waste a lot of time. A guy named Johnny Weaver, don't go picking on with the wife beating Penny. stuff. With Penny. <laughs> he told me that wrestlers miss out on a lot of money. Uh, by by they making money with the wrestling business, so they don't think about getting involved in anything else until they until it's too late. Like, uh, you take, like, for example, uh, uh, the Hardy guy, Jeff Hardy. Yeah. You think my artwork is great. This yeah. kid is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. This kid right now could start his own art studio. Right now. Yeah. He got the money. He got the time. Believe me, in wrestling, most of the wrestlers, and now that Vince is not doing house shows anymore, and they're getting the same money and working less for the money. The, when I was with Mark Hendrick, when I traveled with Mark Hendrick, I worked four days a week. I had three days off. But when I was doing the Abraham Washington show, I worked two days a week, but I got the same money. Yeah. 
These guys now ain't got house shows no more. I, I think the point of contention is, Tony, that's great, but if they actually unionized and actually bargained for rights, like other forms of sport and entertainment, how much better off would they be doing? If you look at other major league sports franchises, the NFL, the NBA, roughly the revenue split is 50-50. In WWE, where it is a publicly traded company, only about 8% of the gross is going to the talent, when in other forms of sport and entertainment, it's close to half the pie. Could they negotiate better deals for themselves if they were unionized? I think that's Yang's point of contention. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I think most of the money would go to the union. See, here one thing wrestlers don't realize about unionizing. All right, let's hear it. You have to pay into the union. Yes, it's not free. It's not free. And once a guy make $100,000 and, and take home 80000 because 20000 went to the union, he ain't going to be happy. Well, See, we always ask for something. And we always like stuff. Like you go into a restaurant, you look at the menu. Oh, lobster, steak. Oh, give me one of each. Oh, great lobster. Oh, great steak. The, the bill. What? At the end, you got to pay. It's not free. So you, you got to ask the wrestlers. You ain't got to ask the wrestler. Are you willing to pay into a union? Because they're not free. Well, they're going to deduct so much money. And so much of the money, like let's say if I put in $20,000 off a hundred, for example. What I Tony, get, no union is going to take 20% of your pay. Well, what did they take? I, when See? I was involved in a union, it was... 50%? No, it, it, was, it two, wasn't two, even, two, maybe ten, worth what a couple of hours a week would be worth. 10? What, what is the score? It's, I don't, to be honest, it's different with every union. But certainly they're not going to take 20% of your gross to ah. be part of the union. But let's just say you were in a union during your big run in the 80s. Wouldn't you enjoy a pension to be mailed to your home every yes, month? Yes, I would. But, but you got a full okay you could get, too. A what? The way to get the retirement plan, like, like, like Tony Gorilla did. What's it called? The 401k? Oh, a 401k Yeah, plan. yeah. Tony Gorilla. But wouldn't it be of, nice yeah, if the company offered it to you? They don't have to offer it, Tony. They didn't offer well, they it to offer it to the office staff. Why not the wrestlers? Well, the wrestlers could get it themselves. What's stopping them from doing it? See, sometime in our life, yeah. like I say, 101 times, this is a surprise when you're going to, what the fans, and it's autographed. Don't show them yet. It's autographed. Now, what do you want me, oh, wow. Now, and what do you want me to copy, do with this story? And that's not the copy of the autograph either. That's you, the actual Do you want autograph. me to hide this for now? Well, when, when we do our thing, you were going to Well, you know, we'll save this for later, then. Well, you can show it to me because at 8 o'clock, it's just going to get auctioned off at 8 o'clock. Well, this, this isn't going to air until Tuesday. So, so, you know what, fans? If you missed our live special Saturday night, we did this beautiful uh, an auction for this Sandman and Tommy Dreamer signed ECW 11 by 17 print. If you go to a fan fest and meet Sabu... It could be signed by all three. That's right. So I can't wait to see how much we raise for the Paul Bear toy you, drive. You, yeah, yeah, you're seventy-five percent completed. That picture wow. is seventy-five percent well, completed. Tony, there's only there's three stars, and signed by two. That's right. That's not seventy-five percent though, brother. What is that? What is that? Two thirds. Two thirds. All right, there you go. See, there Dan, the mathematics. That's all. Right. That's why we're I'm such, the wrestler. That's why we're <laughs> such a good team. Yeah. But Tony, if just imagine if just say in the '80s. When Bob Rima, Sergeant Slaughter, attempted, uh, had union thoughts. When Jesse Ventura wanted to start the union. Imagine if you did pay a small percentage of your pay each week into that union, and in return you had something to look forward to in your glory days. Maybe you wouldn't need to rely on wrestling bookings now that you've reached your 80s. You probably got a point there, but with, with any union... It seems like it works for every other sport, and in, 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 in Hollywood, why not wrestling? Well, it just maybe because I'm old and and yeah. and, and, and uh, the way the old timers were, they figured they was making a pretty good living with what they had. And one of the old saying that the wrestlers used to always tell us, the old time, I wish I had listened. I didn't listen. Save your money, kid. Mm -hmm. That's all they got to do. Save the money. Well, let me ask you this now. You're right. In 2020. The superstars in WWE have never made the type of money they've made before with the, yeah, with the contracts. From I mean, <laughs> you're talking about the majority of the talent in WWE that's full time. Uh, I'm told is 400 grand and up. Yes. But let me ask you this: that's at eight percent of the gross. If it was a unionized company and they were splitting that pie 
what would they be making then? You're talking about millionaires. Yeah, but they'd still be broke. They'd still be broke. Yeah, they'd be broke. See, How some, would they still be broke? You see, called wrestling, wrestlers are self-employed. I understand it, it, it's that. Not, it's not like a football. Football is a team. Right. Wrestler, like if, if, if you was a wrestler, you would be the Dallas Cowboy, I'd be the New England Patriot, the guy working the camera would, uh, 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 would be the New York Jets. That's how it is in Russia. You are self-employed. It's individual company that works together with one company. Now, Tony Atlas is not a person. The person, That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, my name <laughs> is Anthony White. That's the person. My company, my corporation, I'm the, Anthony White is the founder and owner of uh, Tony Atlas. And Vince had me to come down to talk to the kids in, in 2007 to explain this to them, that they are not, like Huck Hogan is a corporation, is a company. Uh, Terry Borland is the founder and creator of that company. Now, Hogan was able to make big money without a union, outside of, of having a union, and show what you could name thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of other rats, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He, would learn, he knew how to take that because you had to be a good business. He'd be a wrestler. <laughs> The more to wrestle than just be the wrestler. You had to be a businessman. So when you go into the profession, you had to go into it with a business sense of man. Not as a, you got to be athletic, of course, but not so much devote all your time into the athletic part of it. And it's kind of like going to school and, and the only class you go to is the gym class and the art class and you miss, you miss science, uh, science, health, uh, I mean science, and arithmetic and geometry. And then at the end of the year, you want to blame the school for what you did not participate in. These guys got a lot of time and enough money where they could form their own thing while they are wrestling. Vince give you that time. He give you that opportunity. You are an individual corporation that comes, that works together with one corporate. So Vince is pretty I, much- well, I think part of the problem is, Tony, that they, they may be labeled independent contractors, but if you look at legally by what the classification of their job is and how they perform it, they are employees. They yeah, don't but, have but but if, if Vince classified an employee that hundred that, that hundred thousand dollar check a year that the boys love to get, I've been around the boys a long time, all of a sudden drop down to seventy thousand a year. But if they were unionized they could be able to bargain and try and negotiate a deal where they well, to me, compensated to me, more. To me the union is like social security. It's great if you live to collect it. All right, but you know what? In this okay. business, that's quite With the all statement. these guys down at such a young age, they're going to pay into something they're never going to benefit from. Let me ask you this then. If it's not, if it's irrelevant and it's not a big deal, um, if it wouldn't be helpful to the boys, why does WWE go after everyone that mentions the U word? Look at Zelina Vega. She was pro-union and now she's gone. Why do they target people that m want to mention the word union? What, what is it that WWE has against it? If it wouldn't uh, well, be beneficial well, see, to that, the talent. That is a question that you put upon me that I can't answer. You're a Hall of Famer. I can't answer that question. I mean, a lot of us that live long enough to see retirement, we wish that it was something that, that, that we could get. But uh, I'm not going to fault the WWE because we all go into it, we all go into it knowing exactly, exactly what we're getting into. Maybe that is my hang up with it. Now, let's say, for example, if WWE want to hire a wrestler and they say, well, do y'all have a union or do y'all have a retirement plan? Just like you go with any job, you know, and they say, no, you got an opportunity. Like you go to Walmart uh, and they put you on part time for two years. You, you work at part time for two years. All right. So you get no benefits, but you knew that when you signed up for the job at, at, at Walmart doing part-time work. And this is all over the world. This is not just the WWE company. Every company does it. You know, they hire people. The only thing they take out is their taxes. These people got to pay their own taxes at the end of the year. You can work for Walmart at the end of the year. Walmart is not going to take care of your taxes. So if this guy didn't save money to pay his taxes at the end of the year, he's in trouble with the government. So it, it, it's not just the WWE. See, they look at WWE because they're popular, they're big. We always look at the big guy. Mm -hmm. We don't look at the everyday worker that, that work for the same, do more work, more work 
than WWE wrestlers with no union to back them up and no retirement plan. Well, I think WWE shot themselves in the foot on this one, and I am a WWE stockholder, so I have to look at it from a business point of view because they're investing my money. But I don't think it was wise for WWE to try and tell independent contractors, their wrestlers, what they can and can't do in their own free time outside of wrestling. Well, I see, think the, that was a huge but mistake. But my point is, my, my point is, is this. I'm a married man, okay? If the most gorgeous woman walk in the face of the earth, said, Tony Atlas, which I know it ain't going to happen, but wish for thinking, come on up here, me and you, we're going to have a, a good time tonight. I got a room, I got champagne, I got caviar, I got your favorite chicken wings, I got everything you need, brother. Come on up in there, take all your clothes off, and we're going to do it all night long. And then, But I know, before I go to that woman's room, that I got a wife. I know that I'm married. My point is, don't sign if you don't want, if, 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 they, if, if things are not, it's up to that wrestler. You can't wait. It's kind of like being married and all of a sudden your wife said you can watch football every Sunday. I have no problem with you watching football every Sunday. Then after about six months into the marriage, the wife said, the, I, don't, I don't want you watching football every Sunday. I want, I, I want to do this on Sunday. I want to do that. You go, well, wait a minute, honey. You was okay with it at first. They went into it, you know, with that, with, with that, with, with that type of, of, of personality. You see what I'm saying? Well, After you get into something, you can't change the rules once you get into the game. They knew well, there was no union. Fair, WWE seems to be changing the rules now by telling the talent, no, they can't go on Cameo and earn extra income. No. They can't go on Twitch and earn extra income in their free time. If they are independent contractors, they are being contracted to be professional wrestlers on WWE live events and television. They programs. don't work for them. WWE is They don't trying work to, for them. Bottom line, well, don't work for them. You can't take something. I am from very somebody. surprised that a man that gets the residual checks that you get from them would not be more pro union. I really am. Well, yeah, because Dan, I. I made a, I, I believe in self responsibility. Don't work for them. They were, they made adult decisions. You make adult decisions. You know what it is when you went into it. That's my only hang up. And believe me, oh, I gotta take back what I said last time. I got another I got another royalty check from WWE. I, did you clear the fifty dollars? Yes I did. I got hundred and forty bucks. hundred and forty dollars. Hundred and forty dollars. So wrestling fans, if you're interested to know what a lot of the legends, Hall of Fame is what they receive four times a year for no, a residual payment. No, that was for the whole year. You made <laughs> That's the whole year. For I got one in two thousand twenty I got one royalty check from the WWE. And it was a hundred or some dollars. I got one. I get like one royalty check. I don't get one every 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 quarter. I wish I got one every quarter. But see, well, for fans that aren't familiar with it, if for, for the retiree or the legends in WWE, the, if you're not under a full-time contract, you get a residual check once per quarter if you clear fifty dollars. Tony, it looks like for the year, he as a Hall of Famer, the first one half of the first Black Tag Team Champions. Made from WWE, $140. For the whole year. Now, and, and you train, and I compare to you with other sport franchise athletes, what they get in their pensions by being unionized, and you still don't think it's a good idea. That's what I, I, I guess I don't, where I'm confused. Well, well I, I did not say I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. I just say I believe, I don't think that, that you should accept the conditions of anything. No matter if it's wrestling, marriage, food, housing, get in there and then go bitch out you get in there. I, you know, you got to make your be, be a man and stand up and put, put the cards on the table at the beginning. So everybody, when me and you get ready to do something, Dan, me and you, we sit down, we, we discuss how we're going to do this. Now, how are you like me and you sit on the phone, you, you explain to me, Exactly how you how, what your flow matter is. You explain to me. You give me a contract. Is everything is in the contract? All the do's and don'ts. It's all in there. Then six months later, I come and say, and then come the show time, and I say, well, Dan, I think I should be getting this now because so and so is getting more money than me. How come this guy is getting this and I'm getting that? How are you like that? I agree to the. I agree to it at the beginning. 
What wrestlers have to do is to form a union outside of the WWE so that when they do go there, they have a, a leg to a leg to uh to stand on. But don't go into something and then complain about it later. When you made an adult decision to go into it, knowing, knowing what the deal was. You know, it's just like when I met one thing I love about my wife Ma uh, Monica, I told her about my about my foot fetish. <laughs> And she said, well, I don't mind other women walking on you as long, as long as it go no further than that. In other words, no kissing, no hugging. And if you notice all the pictures I show you, 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 you never saw not one picture of a woman walking on me in a hotel room. I would not take another woman to a hotel you room. You do it in public places. I, I may show it's out in public. Or at your house. That, that's right. And that way, can't nobody say that I tried to be with this woman or did anything. I would not do anything to disrespect my marriage. Now, if my wife would say, no, I don't like that. I don't think you should be doing that. Now, I got a choice. Now, I know I can't stop being who I am. I know I'm going to do it. So I got a choice. I said, with this woman, I can't marry because she can't live with who I am. You understand? You well, I can't, I can't be friends with this person because I'm straight and this person is homosexual and I'm not homosexual. So I can't be friend with this person. So if I choose to have a homosexual friend, then I knew this person was homosexual before I became their friend. Yeah. So we all are adults is what I'm trying to say is, but don't get into something and then complain about how you uh, uh, try to change things once you get into it. You have to, wrestlers have to figure out a way of doing this, and one of the ways that I would suggest to each wrestler, save a lot of money and time, go into the WWE and use it as a stepping stone like Hogan did. Hogan ain't worrying about no union. The Rock ain't worrying about no union. Stone Cold ain't worrying about no union. Undertaker ain't worrying about no union. And I can name a lot of wrestlers that but never those made... those are the guys that made multi-millions of dollars but, 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 I was, What I'm going to say, I can name guys that did not make that, that, that type of money that, that didn't depend on no union. Like they had a, a guy they called Jerry and Ted Oaks. They was a tag yeah. team in Georgia. They had a very short career. They were tag team, Jerry and Ted Oaks. Well, what they did, they, they put their money together, and they, they got the first, the first hand car washing. All the car wash in Georgia at that time, you have to do it yourself, you know, self-service. Self they came up with this idea where you bring in your car and they custom clean your car. The Oats were the first. They were the first in Georgia to, to, to come up with that idea to start that company for themselves. Now, Ric Flair, he started off on the right track. Ric Flair bought a franchise of Gold's Gym, which, you know, he didn't manage well, and he no. ended up losing it. But at least the old-timers, they was all he on tried. this. The, the, yeah, they was all on this. Uh, Art Nelson was very much involved with the stock market. He bought a lot of stocks in other companies. I remember one time... A guy came in the dressing room, we're going to sell us stocks. And you're going to laugh at this. They're going to open up a new hamburger joint. And one of the old wrestlers said, that's all we need is another damn uh, hamburger joint. And all the boys started laughing. And so we blew the guy off. The guy was Ronald McDonald. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the opportunity is always there for the wrestler to take what they get from the WWE. And See, I agree wrestling, with that. That's wrestling, I agree wrestling with have not meant, have never meant to be a lifetime career. Football, even though they get a union, they get this, they get that, is not meant to be a lifetime career. Basketball, no sport is meant to be a lifetime career. Wrestling, unlike any other sport, give the wrestler opportunity. That what wrestlers don't do, they don't look into nothing else. They got put all the eggs in one bag. They want to stay in wrestling as long as they can. They don't want to do nothing else but wrestle. That's the wrestling problem. So sometimes when you're looking at what other people is doing wrong, sometimes when you look in the mirror, you probably find out that maybe you could make things a little bit better on, on yourself. You take a guy that makes uh, $100,000 a, a, a year. Well, he got deductions, so he's not going to pay that much in taxes. So maybe four or $5,000 after uh, his deduction. Well, he could start investing his money at, at the beginning of his career. By the time he finished his career, he got something to fall back on. My mother used to tell me that all the time. I said, boy, 
Let me have some of that money to invest for you like I did for your brother, Norris, like I did for your brother. He said, I'm not going to spend your money, but then when you're no longer in the limelight, you have a little something to fall back on. I'm a great cook. I'm, I'm Brad. I tell anybody, I am a great cook, a great cook. My mother said, you should open up a, a soul food restaurant. She said, I can run it for you now. And she said, when you get out and when the, when the business grows, you can franchise it. You know, and sell your recipes and stuff to other restaurants. Then you can start your own franchise of a, a, a restaurant. You can start your own. Look what Pete Winkowski in the bodybuilding world. Bodybuilders don't have no union. I, but, but I think that's But there was a lot of bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He didn't need a union to be, to, to be great. He used what he got. See, a wrestler are, most, are the most recognizable, most recognizable athletes on the world. Because when you look at, uh, let's say, John Cena or Roman Reigns, you look at Roman Reigns. When you look at the New England Patriot, you look at the, the Patriot. When you look you at don't a, know the mid and the undercard guys from a regional team. WWE is global. It's global. But what I'm saying is if WWE had better working conditions for the talent now, they wouldn't have this worry. I they think got they, great working conditions. I don't than think, other, I don't other, think, other, other than for me, I mean, my goodness, you got doctors. You, I mean, you got caterers. I mean, they got every freaking thing to to these all guys. Sports, I mean, they, they, they get treated like babies that. compared to me. Come if on, they man. Tree, if they yeah. paid out more than 8% of the gross or they classified them as employees, I don't think they'd have to worry about Yang well, going I'm, after them. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but I'm not disagreeing with one word you say. What I'm looking at is the Do other side of... Do you think Vince is worried about Yang? No. no. He shouldn't be. Why? He got a company to What Yang going to do? My point is this. There's two sides to every coin. Yeah. Everybody look at what Vince... As not good. what your company could do for you as what you could do for yourself. See, I'm one of these guys that learned that a lot of this falls on me. See, a lot of this fall on me. You may get a union. If they do, wonderful. Great. I have no problem with them having a union. My only hang up is don't go into something knowing, knowing exactly what is expected of you and then try to change the game later. When you sign that contract with the WD, Vince gives you, I was going to sign my contract in the office because I was so anxious to have a job. Vince stopped me. He said, no, I want you to take this contract on it, take it to a lawyer, have them to read it, and whatever that lawyer costs you, I will pay for it. Wow. I will pay for a lawyer to look it over with you. I want you to go over this with a lawyer, then sign it and sign it to me. He tell that to every wrestler. So when they sign that, it's a contract. You sign a contract that says this is what you agreed to. So a year into your contract, you can't come back and say, well, you know, I want this, I want... Don't work that way. It don't work that way. You have to... Uh, if, if, if you don't like the idea that there's no retirement, and no, maybe that's not the business for you. Do you think Zelina Vega, it was a big mistake for her to publicly uh, be pro-union? Or it's cost her She's sent home, ain't she? Well, and let me ask you this. Where her, <laughs> She's her, home, ain't she? <laughs> where her, her husband, Alice the Black, is a superstar on SmackDown. Do you think there could be a residual effect on him? What, what it was, she, she spoke out too soon. Yeah. The best thing to do for any wrestler, I tell any wrestler, first make your money. Get yourself in a good, stable position. And then try to help those other ones. But don't, you can't do it while you trying to get somewhere. You, you understand? Let the guy complain about the T-shirt. You know, but say the T-shirt was racist. I can't remember his name, the black guy. Uh, oh, ACH. Yeah, you see, yeah, the yeah, 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 you, you know, you, 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 you got to pick, you have to pick, pick the battles. Yeah, but you have to get yourself in a position. Now, let's say, for example, Undertaker started pushing for a union. Hey, that's okay, because Taker is in a position where if Vince said, no, you don't work, Taker is okay. But for some guy like this girl you're just talking about, how yeah. long has she been there? Maybe two years. She's an idiot. Do you think it's going to have a residual... She's an idiot. Do you think it's going to have a residual effect on her husband, who's still with the company? Not, not unless he get goofy like she did. You think they'll be able to separate Yeah, it's kind of like going to a bodybuilding contest, 
and you want to compete for the Mr. Olympia. You want to be Mr. Olympia. Well, you only been in jail for two months. You have to develop yourself into a position where you have some political strength, some power. You did, the, these people that doing it on their way up, mm -hmm. get, to, get to where Undertaker at. Now, Undertaker could do that. He could push for a union. You know, Hulk Hogan, when he was at his height, he could have pushed for a union. You can't starve with the people on the bottom because they are expendable. Very expendable. Very expendable. It have to be people. Stick a fork in them. Right. It have to be those that have went through the fire, those that went through the wars and went through the matches and, and shared the blood and the sweat and the pain and the injury to look back and say, I don't want rest other wrestlers to go through what I went through and end up broke at the end of the day. So it's not up to the her. She's not in the position to make any changes. She mm -hmm. have no, she's very expendable. She had no power, n nothing. It was like me, I could go and talk to Vince all freaking day long about what I want. Vince could say, well, I'm sorry, Tony. Uh, good luck in whatever you decide to do. He don't have to listen to me. But if Undertaker went and talked to Vince about something like that, or John Cena went and talked to Vince about something like that, or Rock go to talk to Vince about something like that, it have to start from the top, is what I'm saying. These guys at the bottom, all they're going to do is just shorten their career. And ain't nothing going to become a... Yang could fuss all he want until he gets somebody like Undertaker or some of these top brands that, that is needed. Someone that Vince needs get on Andrew Yang. But Rick Flair told me something. He said there would never be a union. Never. Here's the reason why. This is what Rick Flair told me. This back in 1974, he told me this. When he was just... When he was a newbie. Yeah, he was 270 pounds. Yeah. He was huge. Thicker. Thick. Oh, yeah. He used to wear the tie-dye tie uh, T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was not a nature boy there. Yeah. He was no nature Free boy. Free nature boy. That right, there was, he was not even a nature boy there. He was, he was Richard, Richard Flair. Flaherty. Flaherty. Not Flair. Flaherty. He wrestled Richard. as Richard Flaherty? Yeah, that's what that. we used to call him in the dress. The guys used to call him Richard. Nobody called him Rick. They was always right, Richard. Richard say? Yeah, just back when he first started. He only been there been in like a year then, you know. Uh, he started in 73. Uh, but anyway, he said they were never, because Sputnik Monroe tried it. And Rick Flair said this. The wrestlers that are making $200,000 a year, as long as they're making that $200,000 a year, they could give a red ass about the wrestler making $60,000 a year. In this when you look at all the people that is fighting for a union, look at their position. You've never seen one top guy come out for a union. Never. Well, let me ask you this, Tony, in closing, because we are running Except out of... for Jesse the Bottom Van Tour. He was the well, only... Well, Sergeant Slaughter was in a good spot when he was pushing for it. By himself. By himself. By himself. Last but not least, we're, Tony... We're we're left. But, but what if Hogan had jumped in with him at that time? Probably would have happened. And what if Piper had jumped in with Probably him? Probably would have happened. What if all the top guys, the top guys... Threatened to go on strike before Brett, WrestleMania? What would right, you do? But he by himself. Last but not least, Tony, Paige was the really the first of the WWE superstars. She's, been, she's had her issues alone the past couple of years, as we've documented. But Paige has broken her neck in a WWE ring, where now Paige has been vocal on social media about unionization. Do you think WWE would be so callous to eliminate her, too, where she's getting paid right now, whatever her contract was worth, to sit at home with the, the broken neck, but where she's using the U word? Do you think they'd cut her, too? She's not needed. That's what I'm trying to explain. But wouldn't it be it have to, to cut something? But it have to it have to come from the top. Yeah. But that wasn't my question. Do you think WWE would eliminate her position from the company? Of course they will. Even after she oh, broke the yeah, neck. Yeah, they don't care about no broken neck. Are you kidding me? They All made right. me wrestle with a broken neck. I broke my neck uh, in, in Georgia. Only Anderson had some guys to the freaking hospital to slip me out of the freaking hospital to do his TV taping and put me back in the house, brother. That's right. Are you freaking ripping me? Are you ripping me? They, they could care less about a broken neck because that wheel of business is keep going around and around and around, and they let nothing stop it. Nothing stops it. Nothing stops that wheel from, from, from moving. So people go into it with that understanding, is my yeah. point. We right. understand what we're getting into. 
while we're in it. But you can't make changes on your way up the ladder. You have to get up on top of the hill first and then look back. You can't help yourself, but you can help those that follow you. So what all these people that are all about union, 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 make your thing. You may not be part of you. Make your thing and then fight for those underneath you. You see, that's right. the only way it's going to work. If Undertaker right now and get on television, right now Undertaker, and say we need to form a union, things will move. Right, so Undertaker could do more towards a union than a hundred of them other wrestlers all put together. All right, wrestling fans, what do you think about the release of Zelina Vega? What do you think about wrestlers unionizing? What do you think about former Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang uh, apparently going for the jugular with WWE once Joe Biden officially becomes president? If you're watching live during the premiere of this show, share your thoughts in the comments over here. Otherwise, I'll leave your thoughts in the comment section below if you're watching the show after the fact. Don't forget, as we have these live premieres, the Super Chat is always open. Slick Rick B, Maria, our new friend Vaughn, we got some great people to help us keep the lights on. We have the Patreon going 24-7, baby, for less than a Starbucks coffee. You get early ad-free access to all of our great wrestling insider programs and help keep wrestling legends working at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. So much of the great merchandise we have on this set is available and so much more on our eBay store. The link is in the description box below as well as the great WWE t-shirt fundraiser and more important, this time of year, I can hear the bells. I hear those jingle bells coming, Tony. Jingle bell, oh, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it used to be in one horse open sleigh. Hey! Yeah, that. The ninth ah. annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. We can't bring you a live wrestling event, so we're bringing you a cyber fan fest through December the 13th. A plethora of superstars are going to be joining us for cyber autograph signings meet and greets. We're going to have raffles, merchandise, VIP packages, and so much more. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com and be part of the fun. Give us a big <laughs> thumbs up if you like the video. Share it, share it, share it with your friends across social media. The more fans we get involved, the more <laughs> legends like Tony we can keep working. And that's what it's all about to this guy, union or no union. For my partner in crime, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, we'll see you tomorrow night. 10 p.m. It's Wrestling Insiders Rush Hour with Leo Rush. We'll see you with Tony next Tuesday. Good night. Wrestling fans, the ninth annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest explodes into Christmas with interactive cyber autograph signings, live interviews, raffles, merchandise, and more. We were excited to bring you a wrestling event here in Boston, but we have the ability to bring a Cyber Fan Fest to great fans like you around the world. Recent WWE NXT Cruiserweight Champion Leo Rush kicked off the drive with autographed photos and posters still for sale online. Let's run down the list of remakes remaining cyber autograph signings where you can get an autograph photo for yourself or to give to a friend or a loved one this holiday. Mail order for your items is also available. On Survivor Series Sunday, November the 22nd, Marty Jannetty will be with us live for a cyber autograph signing during the farewell to The Undertaker. You never know what to expect with Marty in studio live. We're back Friday, December the 4th with the veteran, former Nation of Domination member Savio Vega, a.k.a. Quang, making a rare appearance in Boston. Things are going to get nasty on Saturday, December the 5th, when Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sags, the Nasty Boys, join us for the very first time. A great chance to get the former WWE and WCW Tag Team Champions signed. Sunday night, December the 6th, WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas returns for a cyber Christmas party during our NXT take over watch along. Tony will be signing autographs and will also have his art available for purchase. The following Friday, December the 11th, one of the most powerful superstars in wrestling history, The Warlord, joins us live in studio discussing his WWF run beginning in 1988. Saturday, December the 12th, the superstar undefeated for two years in the WWF, Native American Tatanka, will be with us supporting the toy drive. Then on Sunday, December the 13th, it's a double feature of 
Future Star Superstars, as recent Ring of Honor Pure Title Tournament competitor Wheeler Yuta joins us in studio for the first time after competing here in Boston Wrestling MWF, along with the man visiting us for the first time in eight years, the new Impact Wrestling World Champion Rich Swan, And it wouldn't be Christmas without old John Cena Sr. with us live and in person as he's been working the phones on the North Pole. Again, autographs and all-inclusive VIP packages are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. Help our tradition of updating Santa's GPS to find every kid's home this year while creating smiles and honoring the late, great Paul Bearer's memory. From our family to yours... Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas.